When most people think about planting cover crops, they think about farming or bigger plots like this one. But cover crops are useful for everyone, especially the home gardener, and even if you have raised beds in your garden like this. And even if you have a greenhouse with raised beds like this. So today we're gonna to talk about five really big benefits to cover crops, no matter where you plant them. Let's go. Okay, those benefits are that they enhance the soil, they heal the soil, they feed the soil, they replenish the soil, and they protect the soil. All of those things are very, very important if you've already grown in your garden for the year. It doesn't matter if it's in a plot like this or in a raised bed. Because that soil that you have just grown in needs to be replenished from what was taken out of it by whatever crop you grew. And it also needs to be protected during the winter time when you're not growing a crop in there. And it is very important that we cover the soil with something living while we are not cultivating it for produce. And our ultimate goal is to build the healthiest soil that we possibly can to produce later the healthiest plants that we can. So I wanna make sure you understand that this is not a one-time process. This isn't cover this bed this winter with cover crops, do it once, and then the bed is rejuvenated for years to come. That is certainly not the case. This is a long-term commitment of rotating fall and spring cover crops through your garden beds, wherever they may be. Raised like this in the garden, in the greenhouse, or tilled into the soil itself. So another benefit to leaving the cover crops and letting them die or decompose on the soil is that they feed the soil. They're a green manure in a lot of the cover crop mixes that you buy out there, that's what they're called, green manure. You can just leave them like this. These beans will die when our temperatures get low enough to kill them off, and that's what's called a winter kill. So a lot of cover crop mixes will have legumes in them like this, and we'll just let them die off. So most people will just do a chop and drop where they Cut everything off at the top of the soil and just leave it in place. That's a great method too that starts to feed the soil in this area. But it's very important to always lead the roots, whether you're chopping them off here and taking them away for your compost pile or chopping them and dropping them, you have to leave those roots in the soil. So what those decomposing roots are doing is they are leaving food for the microbes in the soil to break down. And once they're done breaking them down, they're gonna leave those air pockets in the soil. Like we talked about earlier, getting air down into your soil is very beneficial. Now the last thing people do to mix their cover crops into the soil is till it. Now it's obviously not easy to till a raised garden bed like this or even the ones in our garden out there. But tilling is a perfectly good method to use unless you want a no-till garden. So here's one thing to keep in mind. When you are killing off your cover crops, whatever they may be, the tender stemmed plants are only gonna take about two to four weeks to break down and decompose. There are other things that do take a long time to do it. So when you're thinking about crop rotation and timing of your cover crops so that you can plant your next season of crops, be mindful of that. Some things take a lot longer to break down if you are doing the non-till method of leaving things in the soil to break down themselves and die off themselves. So what we're gonna do is rake our bed with a garden rake. That's gonna give us some little furrows. Once we have those, we're just gonna broadcast our seed throughout the bed. Now before I do that, I wanna talk about what is in a cover crop or a cover crop mix like this. Now each company is going to be a little bit different. This one in particular has field pea, winter rye, hairy vetch, and crimson clover. And it also has an annual rye grass in it. Now it's really important to get a seed mix, in my opinion, because each one of those different plants is going to give you a different benefit. Most of the seeds that they put into a cover crop mix are going to fix nitrogen. That is basically the biggest thing that they are trying to do to heal the soil is fix that nitrogen. But there are other things like mustards that can be planted that are biofumigants. What that means is they're going to keep away pests. Something that the plant produces helps to eliminate pests and keep them away from the area. 
Now we all know that a lot of our fruits and vegetables in the garden use a ton of nitrogen, especially the tomatoes next to me. So that soil needs to be replenished. And replenishing that nitrogen naturally with a cover crop is much better than using any synthetic fertilizer. This is going to give you other benefits besides just fixing those nutrients back into the soil. So a cover crop is going to protect your soil in two different ways. It's going to protect it from erosion, which is a big concern of a lot of larger farmers. I don't have to worry about that too much with my little garden beds like this, but my new plot over here, I do because it's sloped down toward the house. But it's gonna protect it in another way. And what that is, is covering the soil. I know, weird, right? Cover crop. It covers up that soil and protects it from weed seeds blowing in all winter long. And it's gonna shade it. So that's going to help keep moisture down in the soil. Now, one of the huge benefits of cover cropping is to bring more moisture and also air down into the soil. So in your cover crop mix, within that mix, each species of plant is going to have a different root structure. It's going to have a different depth of root. A lot of these uh, mixes do put like daikon radish in there or some other types of radish because that tap root goes down really deep. It grows really fast and it opens that soil up and that helps moisture get down into the soil as well. Now you wanna keep in mind that this does not go on too thick when you're broadcasting it. This is a pound right here, and a pound and a half will do a thousand square feet. Here's what ours looks like. You can see all the different types of seeds contained within it. And you can see how lightly I'm covering the soil with these. So they don't need to be covered with that much soil. Just take your rake and go in the opposite direction to what you originally did. So if I raked this way, rake it perpendicular. That should be plenty to cover those seeds. Then of course, just water them in. No need to drench them. Just give the soil a good soaking and you should be good to go. Here's an important point I don't want you to miss. Those cover crops are gonna grow out in about four to eight weeks and some will flower in that time period, but don't let them go to seed. Because if you let them go to seed, they're gonna drop that seed in place and then continue to grow. And you want to prepare your bed for your produce crops soon after you've done your cover crop. So friends, there is absolutely no downside to this. There is only benefits to doing a cover crop. And if you're thinking, well, it's expensive to buy at the beginning, it's not. It's way less expensive than trying to feed your soil in other ways. And what I mean by that is a, it's a cost to benefit ratio. Of course, if you're feeding your soil with leaves and things like that, that's awesome. But the cover crop is going to add so much more benefit quicker then those leaves are gonna add. So don't think cover cropping is just for big farmers. It is not, it is for everyone, even if you've got small raised beds. It's really a win-win. You can't go wrong with doing this method. I need to get back to doing this bed right here, which is one of our new beds, and we need to add to the soil. If you haven't seen our method on how to prepare a new bed, from a grassy area like this, please click on the video at the top of the screen. And now I want you to go click on this playlist right here, which is our entire series about how we built that greenhouse by ourselves. Have a beautiful blessed day and we will see you on the next video. Bye.